A 14 kilogram toddler throws a 0.38 kilogram football 4.7 meters per second to the right. Find the recoil velocity of the child. We know that in this case, as in all closed systems, momentum will be conserved, which means that the momentum that we have at the end will equal the total momentum we have at the beginning. What is the total momentum we have at the beginning? The toddler isn't moving, the ball isn't moving, so the total momentum we have at the beginning is zero. What would be the total momentum at the end? Momentum, of course, is mass times velocity. So the momentum of the child will be mass of the child times velocity of the child. The momentum of the ball will be mass of the ball times velocity of the ball. And the sum of those, we need to put a plus sign there. Let's put in what we have. The right side is 0. The mass of the child is 14. The velocity of the child we don't have. We do have the mass of the ball and the velocity of the ball. If we solve this for the velocity of the child, our calculator will say negative 0.13 meters per second. And what does that mean? That just means that the child is going to go in the negative direction. You can see that right here we chose the ball to have a positive velocity. So the boy will go the other way, which means he'll have a negative velocity. Here's another case where initially the momentum of this system is zero. If this tank is at rest, there's no momentum in the system to start with. Then when the projectile is launched, the shell goes one way with a certain amount of momentum because it has a mass and a velocity, and the tank will recoil back, at least for a short time, in the other direction. Now the recoil velocity will be much lower because the mass of the tank is so much greater. And here's one more case where before the rocket was launched, the initial momentum was zero. The rocket wasn't moving, the exhaust gas wasn't moving, and at the end, the total momentum of that system will still be zero. The rocket will have a certain mass and will be going in one direction, and the gas will have a certain mass and will be moving with a particular speed in the other direction. Let's try this one. An 8-ton rocket travels at 3 miles per second to the right. After firing its engines, the rocket's mass drops to 7 tons, and it travels now at 5 miles per second. Has momentum been conserved? Explain. Well, the first answer is yes, momentum has been conserved, and that's because momentum is always conserved. Well, that's not really an answer. I would prefer that you show me. So we can do that. The initial momentum will be 8 tons times 3 miles per second. I know these aren't standard SI units, but momentum is mass times velocity. So initially we have a mass of 8 and a velocity of 3, which is 24, and at the end we have a mass of 7 and a velocity of 5, and that's 24, wait a minute, that's 35. Right, wrong. Maybe momentum hasn't been conserved. Ah, but don't forget the exhaust gas. See, the exhaust gas is still a part of the system. And how much exhaust gas have we lost after we've fired the engines? Hopefully you can see that we've lost one ton of exhaust gas because the mass of our rocket has dropped from eight tons to seven tons. So one ton of exhaust gas is heading out the back way. So let's try it again. The initial momentum, which I put on the right side of the equation, 8 tons times 3 miles per second, that's 24. The final momentum is 7 tons times 5 miles per second plus 1 ton of exhaust gas, which is going the other way at some speed. If we were to calculate this, it would turn out that the exhaust gas is heading in the negative direction at 11 miles per second. So momentum is always conserved and the exhaust gas in this example is still a part of the system. And the reason is, is because it was part of the system to start with. 
Final thoughts on the conservation of 1D momentum 1. For a closed system, the total momentum at the end equals the total momentum at the beginning. Even if there is no motion initially, that simply means that the total initial momentum is zero and that, at the end, one part of the system must go this way with, say, positive velocity and momentum, while another part of the system must go that way with negative velocity and momentum.